Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. Joining us now is our in-house analyst, Victoria Peppel, with stories trending around the world. Good morning, Victoria. Good morning. Looking gorgeous, OG. Oh, thank you. You too. Hi. Looking nice as well. Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's trending? All right, so former Vice President Atiku Abubakar and the PDP presidential aspirants is asking for forgiveness from fellow party members for his actions in 2003. After being given the task by then President Olusegun Obasanjo to deliver the six southwest states, then governed by the Alliance for Democracy to the PDP, he successfully did, leaving out Lagos. This was because of his relationship with former Governor Asiwaju Bola Tinubu, promising to take Lagos, well, promising that this time he will deliver Lagos to where it belongs, the PDP. Promising to deliver Lagos, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Well, Bati has some strong views on this is, one. This is uh, some kind of confession. <laughs> yes. And I think that uh, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar is more or less saying that uh, he committed anti-party infractions. Yes. If on the basis of friendship, you know, he couldn't go all out to win Lagos for his party. Mm. It's another question entirely uh, whether he will have succeeded in doing so. And imagine Okay, how... so it's a presumption yes. that he will have been able to win uh, Lagos, Lagos. Because there are other sides to that story. Yeah. In that election, it was only Ashiwa Dupola Tinubu who refused, as governor of Lagos State, to play along, mm. you know, with the government in Abuja. Yes, and he suffered what the for PDP, it. the dummy that the PDP sold, you know, to uh, the uh, governors in the in the uh, in the southwestern states, was that oh, because Obasanjo uh, was Yoruba mm. and he was president and he didn't get much support in 1999 uh, from his own constituency, then you know the governors should support him. And they too will be supported during their own elections. And it was only Tinubu that had a different strategy. Yeah. And it was for that reason that he became the person they referred to as the last man standing. Mm. All the other governors lost their positions. You know, he alone remained standing. So, uh, vi former Vice President Atiku may be talking about, uh, okay, because Tinubu was his friend, mm. but Tinubu himself had his own strategy, which mm. was superior. Mm. Okay, so uh, there are many ways to look at yeah, it. Yeah, it's not enough for him to say he didn't. He didn't take Lagos. So he, he probably I, he wouldn't have been able to. But at the end of the day, he probably wished that he had fought harder for Lagos, because Lagos is the economic capital of Nigeria yes. and is Pop. very important to any party that might want to, you know, hold power in uh, Nigeria. So moving on, Colin Kaepernick, the quarterback formerly of the San Francisco. 49ers is the new face of Nike's 30th anniversary just to a campaign. Kaepernick protested against the racial injustice and police brutality by sitting during the national anthem in August 2016 and later opted to kneel, which led to the termination of his football contract with the San Francisco 49ers. But yesterday, Nike described him as one of the most inspirational athletes of this generation. Kaepernick has also received Amnesty International's highest honor. In reaction to Nike's announcement, when people got riled up about it, posting videos and photos on social media of Nike products being cut up, burned, or destroyed. <clears throat> I remember this story. This was very inspirational, that meal he yeah. had during that football um, um, Game. ceremony. Yeah. And uh, it is true. He is one of the most inspirational because everyone was trending about that. He actually did defy the odds did. because it was during the national... And then a lot of players followed suit. Yes. Wow. Well, I, I think we, we need to contextualize it. This was at a time when there was the Black Lives Matter yes. protest, and the police were being accused of brutalizing uh, people. And the case, there was also the dramatic case of a black guy uh, who died. And that caused outrage, uh, not just in the United States, but also across the world. And there were persons who felt that the, uh, uh, the attack of the, uh, of the police on persons were racially motivated. Of course. So as a result of that, there was that protest. And you recall that when Kaepernick you know, uh, uh, took that move in August uh, 2016, and his team players followed, and other you know, team uh, players in other places followed his example, he was strongly criticized by President Trump and yes. far-right persons uh, because he had brought into sports a uh, certain ideological uh, statement yes. you know, that some persons interpreted uh, from the racial uh, uh, prison. Um, He's been out of job, by the yes, way, since has. then, uh, because the team owners, you know, just refused to sign, uh, to sign him on. Mm. You know. And he, so he took it to the law courts. Uh, he, he's um, accusing the NFL of, you know, not giving him work. And um, NFL wanted to 
the, the suit to be thrown out, but it's proceeding on to, you know, um, court proper. So it will be a legal battle. But the recognition he's getting from Nike, from Amnesty International, yes. I think is to uh, encourage him and to also uh, motivate other people mm. uh, to summon the courage to speak up right. in the face of, uh, of injustice. Yes. Right, right. And Nike what should refuse people... to be intimidated you know, uh, by the emotional yes. reaction people are of those of who are could hurt Nike's attacking brand. Nike. Yeah. And Nike should not be taking a political stand on matters. Mm. That's another angle people have looked at it. I wonder how it will affect the brand. Well, but I mean, well, uh, I sports think... athletes have been taking political yes. uh, positions uh, for a very long time. Mm. Remember the dramatic case of Jesse Owens, you know, um, the athlete mm. uh, who uh, defied, you know, Hitler more or less, uh, you know, and all of that. Yes. Mm. All right, so still on spot, Messi yeah. has been omitted from the FIFA yes, award, is uh, that correct? For the first time since 2006, a Gentile player, Lionel Messi, was omitted from the Best Men's Player Award. Luka Modric, Mohamed Salah and Cristiano Ronaldo made up the trio on the shortlist. The reaction on social media was one of dismay. I personally like Messi, so it's kind of disappointing. Yeah, I wonder what criteria... Well, I mean, he's been, uh, in the, he's been a finalist now and then since 2006. He was in the shortlist mm, yeah. of yeah, 10. 10 yeah. Then he didn't make the final shortlist of uh, three. Uh, but the speculation is that the Croatian, Luka Modric, mm. uh, is likely to be the one uh, to take the uh, trophy. Oh. Uh, I but I, 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 I like the uh, rivalry, you know, among mm, these yes. uh, talented uh, yes. persons. Yeah. Uh, remember, Ronaldo didn't even go for the Champions League award mm. uh, because, it, you know, he, he found out that it was Luka Modric who was going to uh, to win. So I like the competition. But FIFA is also giving uh, awards in other categories. Yeah. Yes. You know, uh, best male coach, mm -hmm. uh, best uh, team, and all of that. But the one that you know seized my attention was the one for the best fans. Best okay. fans. You know. So That's I, interesting. You know, Senegal and uh, and Japan mm -hmm. in one category for being the tidiest team that came to the uh, what about World the, Cup. The World Cup. best dressed team. Uh, Is there a category no, there like wasn't that? such a category. Unfortunately, because you know. we know who would have walked away with <laughs> that the, the best man, one gentleman who traveled 3,000 miles, mm. wow. you know, to go to the uh, wow. event. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, one other country, um, which I don't immediately remember now. You know, uh, Peru, mm. Peru, Peru. Peru fans, mm. you know, they are, they are also on that short list. So I looked for Nigeria. You know, yeah. I couldn't find Nigeria. Best dressed, because, best dressed. I mean, they should have created the, so the category for yes, us, yeah. the best dressed uh, Most fans. <laughs> are you a football fan, Dr. Batty? Of course. No, I'm a fan of everything. Oh. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Victoria, for joining us on this segment. Well, that brings us to the end of the morning show today. Thank you for watching from our entire team here in Lagos. Enjoy the rest of your morning and, of course, the rest of your day. Goodbye.